Hey guys, this is Jim, WT1W, and you're watching FEP Labs Radio. Thanks for stopping by. Appreciate it. So today I wanted to share with you a little bit of oscilloscope things, something we can do and use our oscilloscopes for that you may not have realized. So we talk about radio output power in watts, which is a unit of power. An oscilloscope measures voltage over time. Nothing to do with current necessarily, not with the basic oscilloscope setup. There are other ways, we're not gonna get into those, but we are gonna learn how to take a quick measurement to get a power measurement in watts from our radio. Now, a couple of caveats about this whole thing. There are easier ways to do this. You absolutely can buy a meter, a, a SWR watt meter for, you know, I don't know, 100 bucks, maybe a little less, a little more, that will show you your SWR and your output power in watts. And they work fine, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with them. And they are more than close enough for ham radio operations. Ain't none of us running an NIST lab at our ham shacks, right? But it was something I was curious about doing and I started thinking about it and we have enough data that we can calculate our output power with a little bit of math. So what I want to show you is we're going to, I'm, I'm using a Yaesu 857D uh, and we're going to switch cameras here in a minute. I'm using 857D as our, as our radio device, our device under test as it, as it were. And I have uh, the MFJ digital watt meter hooked up to it right now. And we're going to, we're going to key up um, I've got the radio set to FM mode, so I generate a carrier, and we're going to see what kind of output power we have using the watt meter. And then we're going to hook up the oscilloscope, and we're going to compare that. So then what we're going to do after we get those readings is we're going to look at a couple slides with some math on it, and then we're going to math through this and see if A, I did it right, and B, if the reading we get with our oscilloscope and our math is the correct number. So we're going to use Ohm's law to do this. And we have, or will have when we hook this up, two of the three pieces to derive the third. So when we, when we end up hooking up the oscilloscope, we're going to find out what kind of voltage we're looking at on our HF radio when we key up. That voltage we're going to look at is RMS voltage, root mean squared voltage. We know that we're going to have a load, an impedance, of somewhere around 50 ohms. And we'll actually measure the actual impedance of the, uh, of the dummy load I'm using here to get that exact value. And then we're gonna math it and take our impedance and our RMS voltage, throw those all together in a little bit of basic math and find out what our output power is in watts just using an oscilloscope, a dummy load, and our radio. So let's get to it. I'm gonna switch cameras. We'll take a look at what we're getting on the meter, and then I'm going to break and set up, and we'll come back and look at it on the oscilloscope and go through our little math operation to see if we get values that are sane and reasonably close. Okay, here's our basic setup right here. We've got our 857 here. We have an MFJ dummy load. This is a 300-watt dummy load here. The radio, of course, is a 100 watt HF, 2 meter, 440 radio. And all we're going to be doing is testing HF. Now, one thing I mentioned is that we're going to use an oscilloscope. Important tip here. With the oscilloscope, since the oscilloscope we're going to use does not have a gig of bandwidth, actually more than a gig of bandwidth, we can't really do this test on VHF and UHF. The oscilloscope needs to have three to five times the amount of bandwidth from the frequency we're testing at. So at 144, that would be somewhere around 500 megahertz, which actually my big oscilloscope can do. We're not gonna be using my big one, we're gonna be using the, the small handheld O1 oscilloscope, and I've done a video on that previously. But for HF, almost any oscilloscope will do. So at the, at the lower HF frequencies, say 40, 20 um, meters, 20 meters is 14 megahertz times five is about 80 megahertz. So a hundred megahertz scope will get you up to at least the 20 meter band. And you could probably get a reasonably close value at, at 
at um, probably 15 meters. I'm having to do math in my head. I shouldn't be doing that on camera. So somewhere in there. But today we're going to test this on 40 meters just to prove that it can be done and, and see if we get numbers that make sense. So what I have here is the MFJ meter, and I'm going to hold it up because this is an awkward setup. And I have the radio is set on the radio is set on FM, so we generate a carrier. All right, so for our test, we're going to have the radio set on 7125. I'm transmitting into a, a dummy load here, so it doesn't really matter. I've got the power level on the radio set to 30. I don't know if that's a one-to-one -one correlation for watts, but the scale goes to 100, so we're going to call it 30 watts, 30%, whatever you want to look at it. When I key up, and like I said, we're set on FM, so when I key up here now into the dummy load, we're seeing 25.6 watts, and we're seeing a 1.06 SWR, so our dummy load may not be perfect, and 0.05 watts of reflected power. We're not even going to get into worrying about reflected power for this particular thing. I just wanted to share with you what we're getting off of the MFJ meter. All right. So I'm going to move this stuff out of the way. We're going to get the oscilloscope out, the little one, and set up and take some measurements. Okay, so what I've got here real quick is we're going to test the dummy load. This is actually connected back here to the rig expert. This is the cable coming from the radio, and of course there's power back there. So what we want to do is we want to uh, do show all and tell it to go, and we want to see what our impedance is. And we have an impedance of... 57.7 ohms. So let's remember that number because we're going to use it when we math. Okay, we've got our scope hooked up, and here's the setup. This cable is coming from the radio. Uh, we're going into this T connector out to the dummy load over here and then to the channel 1 input on the oscilloscope. So the key here is that the oscilloscope is high impedance, typically 1 meg ohm or more. And of course, this way is low impedance. This is 50 mega ohm. So since this guy is set to high impedance, almost all the uh, voltage is going to go this way because there's so much resistance over here. So what we want to do is get a voltage measurement. Now you can do this a couple ways, and there's a couple different measurements you can use. We can look at RMS voltage, or we can look at peak-to-peak -peak voltage. This particular meter uh, scope doesn't show RMS but it does show peak to peak. So we're gonna take a look at a peak to peak voltage, and then we're gonna jump over and do a little math on the screen. Bless my heart. So once again, dummy load, 857D. We're in a T connector going into the oscilloscope, and then down here at the bottom, we will see a VPP reading when I key up. So I wanna make sure my power is set to 30 because I was tinkering with this earlier. And I want to set it back up. So this is set to 30 on the radio. And we're in FM mode and we're going to key up. Now, the scale will not show up completely because this meter doesn't have that much room on it. We're interested in the numbers on this. If I needed to see the waveform, I'd have to use the big oscilloscope. And I'm basically just too lazy to get it out right. But what we're looking at is going to be VPP down here on the bottom. And I don't know how well that's showing up on the camera, but reading it here, we're seeing 102 volts peak to peak on the meter. And that's this middle number right there. Yeah, we can just about see that on the camera, 102 volts. And the radio is set at 30% power. So based on our 102 volts, we're gonna jump over and take a look at some formulas and do a little math and see if we can get our output power and see if it's close to what we read on the MFJ digital watt meter. Okay, so we've got our root numbers, our basic numbers that we're going to work with, and I've got a slide set created. We're not going to run through the calculator. I've already worked the math to make sure I'm right. And here's what we came up with, and I'm going to kind of go through it and how we got there. Just a few slides, not too long. So the first thing, oops, is we have a peak-to-peak -peak voltage. 
that is 102 volts. We know the impedance that we're seeing is 57.7 ohms on the dummy load. All right, so we want to find out how much power we're putting out of the radio or how much power is being dissipated in the circuit. So VPP is the total voltage swing from the highest to the lowest point of our AC sine wave. To use power formulas, we need VRMS, root mean squared voltage, okay? So we gotta calculate that. The calculation for that is the formula here on the screen, RMS voltage equals VPP divided by two times the square root of two. So that gives us VRMS. So here is me working the math, making PowerPoint slides for y'all. So there's our formula. We're gonna change out our values, our VMRS, VRMS is 102 volts divided by two times 1.414, the square root of two. So 102 volts divided by 2.828, and that gives us an RMS voltage of 36.08 volts. Now, an interesting thing here, for one, this oscilloscope does not show RMS voltage, which I thought it did, and this would have been a lot shorter and easier if it did, but it don't. So I had to do the calculation, and it's no big deal. It's easy enough to get, it's just math in it. The other thing is, and, and if y'all in the comments can, can clue me in on this, does a ohm meter, a, VF, a DMM, not have high impedance? So could I not tap the bottom of that T instead of hooking it on, instead of hooking it to the oscilloscope, should I be able to use a meter that reads VRMS? right, root mean square voltage, true RMS voltage, and get the same math out of it. I tried it, didn't get good results, and maybe the meter I use does not do true RMS voltage. Anyway, that's a, that's a whole nother video. I think you should be able to do that. We'll see. Anyway, so now we've got our RMS voltage. Step two is getting our power in our circuit. And remember, we're dealing with AC here. It's, it's an RF signal, so it is alternating current because we have the sine wave. And the formula for that is RMS squared divided by the impedance. So our RMS is 36.08 volts. We got that in that slide, the bottom number there. So, and our impedance, our Z value is 57.7 ohms. We got that when we hooked up the rig expert to read the impedance on the dummy load. And now we're gonna calculate power. Power is RMS squared divided by the impedance. So first thing we wanna do is square our RMS, 36.08 squared yields 1301.77. Now we're gonna divide that by our impedance and that gives us 22.56 watts. So the power dissipated in the circuit is 22.56. The thing is, if you remember, our meter read more like 26 or 27. What did it say? I didn't write that down. Whatever it said in the beginning of the video. And it was a little bit more, it was a few, a few watts more than 22.56. So, you know, again, we're not using high-end lab equipment, and certainly that meter is not high-end lab equipment. But I'd say the values are pretty close, and between the two, I would probably trust this more than I would trust that meter. So my measuring method seems legitimate. I've seen other videos on this done a long time ago from several other YouTube videos. The math works out, and it's close enough that I think the values are sane. Although they're not the same, they're sane given that, again, not lab equipment here, and certainly the MFJ digital multi or digital watt meter is not lab grade equipment. So, you know, your mileage may vary kind of thing on that. Anyway, there is something you can do with your oscilloscope and you don't need a high end one to get decent math out of it. Certainly for HF frequencies, uh, 14 megahertz, 18 megahertz would work on a 100 meg scope, uh, 21 megahertz, Maybe 24 would be about as high as you'd want to go on a 100 megahertz scope. The problem is, is that you need that extra bandwidth to get the full signal because that is going to affect our voltage. It's also very possible 
that if I did the test on my Regal 500 millihertz os megahertz oscilloscope, that's hard to say, that we would have been a little closer to the voltage we saw on the MFJ meter. Then again, this may be exactly correct and the MFJ meter is what's off. I'd probably trust this more than the MFJ. Guys, in any case, that's all I got for you today. If you would, give me a thumbs up. Tell everybody you liked the video. Share it with your friends. Make sure you ring the bell below to get notified whenever I post any new content. And as an FYI, I've got a Sunday morning show now at 9 a.m., Temporarily Offline and I, talk about whatever's on our minds related to ham radio and ham radio adjacent topics. Thanks, y'all. Have a great one. 73.